Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another show uh, live from Karbala where we discussed over the past few episodes uh, orphans in the Quran and humility in the Quran as well as human life uh, in the Holy Quran. Uh, for, the, for the respected viewers who didn't get the chance to actually uh, see uh, the previous episodes, uh, sorry, episodes can go on to our YouTube channel at Mount Hussein TV3 and check out uh, the uploads and as well as the episodes. But uh, today, uh, let's welcome uh, Sayyid Hussein Qazwini once again, our uh, dear guest. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidina. Alaikum assalam. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Hope you are well, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. 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 Uh, so uh, tonight, Sayyidina, inshallah, we will discuss respect to parents in the Holy Quran. Uh, we always see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, within the Holy Quran, uh, they always, he always instructs children to be respectful to parents. And we don't see that with the parents mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to respect the children. So if you can emphasize on that, inshaAllah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi al-tahirin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alihi al-tahirin. Um, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions parents uh, your parents, al walidain mm -hmm. uh, or al walidan at least seven times, at least, perhaps even more. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the context of how children should treat their parents, at least seven, seven verses. There might be other verses that talk about inheritance, for example, and so on, general laws. Mm -hmm. And these verses, these seven verses, are always emphasizing on how children should treat parents. Mm -hmm. Goodness to parents, parents, kindness to parents, forgiveness to parents, so on and so forth. But we never see the Qur'an uh, reminding parents to take care of their children. Never. Never. There, except there is one verse, uh, I believe in Surah An-Nisa. Mm -hmm. يُوصِيكُمُ اللَّهُ فِي أَوْلَادِكُمْ لِلذَّكَرِ مِثْلُ حَظُ الْأُنْثَيَنِ And this is only regarding inheritance. Mm -hmm. That Allah is giving the laws of inherit inheritance to parents. That a, a, uh, a man shall receive double the amount of a female. This verse is not instructing parents how to treat their children. Mm -hmm. All the other verses, it's instructing children how to treat their parents. Mm -hmm. The reason, my dear brother and my dear viewers, simply is that parents don't need a reminder. Parents don't need instructions yeah. as how to treat their children. Mm -hmm. A father, a mother, never needs someone to tell them, listen, feed your child. Don't, don't sleep tonight if your son or daughter is hungry. Make sure that they get an education. Make sure that they are well fed, well, well clothed, so on and so forth. Never. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put it in their system, biologically. Parents are biologically engineered to take care of their, of their children. Um, there's, a, there's a gene. We human beings have a gene. And I'm sure that you've come across this when you studied biology. Mm -hmm. I remember when I studied biology back in college, mm -hmm. I remember... I studied this, that there's a gene in us in every human being called fight or flight mm -hmm. gene. When a human being is in danger or is in a very difficult situation, he has genes that tell him either fight it, mm -hmm. fight that situation, or flight, flee, run away. How did they discover this gene? Scientists discovered this gene from a mother that was crossing the road with a, a baby stroller. The baby's in the stroller. She's crossing the street, and all of a sudden, a car passes by. Mm -hmm. Doesn't notice the mom and the child. Takes a break, but isn't... It get, the car sense. comes very close. Yeah. The mother, all of a sudden, picked up the car. Picked up the car. This is not Hollywood. This is not fiction. This is not a 
a fairy tale, uh, a fairy tale or a hadith <laughs> mentioned in Sahih al Bukhari <laughs> or Sahih al Muslim. Or, no, this is uh, a true story that happened, I believe, in the United States of America. They discovered that we human beings have genes in us that in difficult situations, these genes either give us the capability of fleeing, running away, or fighting. This mother had the genes, had the energy to pick up a car, not to save her life. If she was alone, she would have probably ran across the street, but she picked up the car because of the child, mm -hmm. because of the child. We're bi biologically engineered to take care of our children. But, parent, but children are now bi biologically engineered to take care of their parents. In fact, most children end up forgetting, forgetting their parents. They forget about their parents. Mm -hmm. They forget about their duties towards their parents. When they grow up, when they have families of their own, when they have children of their own, children are in school, they get married, the, the children get married, they have children of their own, they're busy with their lives, most of the times they'll end up neglecting their parents. Yeah. We've heard so many stories, especially in the West, especially in the West, of children neglecting their parents. Or putting them in old age homes. Pu putting them in nurseries. Yeah. In nurseries. Nursing homes for the elderly. In the, in the United States of America, wherever you go, you see nursing homes for the elderly. There's a lot. There's a lot. Why? Because the son or daughter is too busy with work. They're too busy with their own families. They're not willing to take care of this aging father and mother. Th these two parents that spend the best years of their life taking care of this child, yet this child now is too busy with his own life. And they're in that situation... Because they took care of their children, that child that neglected them, and then the end. And this is how they pay them back. I remember when we, uh, when we used to live in the United States of America, mm -hmm. we had a neighbor. He was, a, uh, he was a, a heart surgeon. And he became old. Him and his wife became old. His wife passed away, and he, he stayed by himself. And then he, be, he got Alzheimer's. He was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. And he was by himself. One day I saw his son had come all the way from Arizona. We were in California. Arizona by car, it's at least 10, so it's 12 hours away. He came and he was taking his father. I was very surprised that this man is going, going to take his father with him into his house and take care of him. So I, I asked see. him that you're taking I your father. <laughs> I told him, you're taking your father? He said, mm -hmm. yes, I'm taking him to Arizona with me. I told him, you know what? I'm, I'm very proud of you. Mm -hmm. This is excellent. That you're going to bring him to your house and take, take care, care of him. him. And your wife is a lovely... I said, wait, wait, wait. I didn't say I'm going to bring him to my house. Yeah. I'm just going to put him in a nursing, mm -hmm. nursing house for the elderly close to my house. Yeah. I said, well, there you go. That's how it is in the West. That's did sad. this father, I was thinking to myself, did this father ever think of putting his child at a nursery, get rid of his son, and just go and visit him once a week or once every two weeks? In the United States of America and Europe, most children, and what I mean by children is sons and daughters. They might be 40 or 50 years old, but mm -hmm. they're still children compared to their mm -hmm. parents. Most of them they rarely ask about their parents. Probably yeah. just on Christmas. Christmas is the only time in which they ask about their parents. Or in the West, they came up with Father's Day and Mother's Day. Because mothers and fathers are so neglected, they're so it's, forgotten that they had the to dedicate an, an entire day out of the year for mothers and fathers. I, I gave a lecture once on Mother's Day, back a couple years back. In the lecture, I said, listen, in Islam, every day is Mother's Day. Yeah. Every day is Father's Day. We don't dedicate one year, one day out of the year for our mothers and fathers. Every day is Mother's Day and Father's Day. Mm -hmm. Thus, Islam, the Quran, comes and emphasizes, emphasizes on parents. 
because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that children when they grow up they'll be busy with their own lives mm -hmm. and they'll neglect their parents that's they need a reminder not once not twice at least seven times at least seven reminders that you need to take care of your parents that's significant because not, on, not only taking care and respecting your parents Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Quran وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا and kindness to your parents this verse is, is unique because it teaches us that uh, in, in the same chapter as well um, inshallah you will discuss it but uh, even non-Muslim parents Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or parents that are actually Muslim but they tell their children not to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and take care of them and respect them so if you can emphasize and uh, how should we be kind to our parents we have several verses that uh, that mention Ihsan mm -hmm. Ihsan is kindness in one verse وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَن لَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And another verse وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ إِحْسَانًا And a third verse وَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا إِحْسَانًا means kindness Kindness is more than just respect mm -hmm. Respect <coughs> is for example uh, not saying anything harsh not shouting but it doesn't necessarily mean being kind mm -hmm. you could respect someone without being kind to them you could obey someone the Quran doesn't just say obey your parents the Quran could say just obey your parents no more than be that kind. more than respect and obedience kindness kindness because kindness entails respect mm -hmm. you can't be kind to someone without respecting them mm -hmm. you have to respect them you can't be kind to your parents without obeying them you can't be disobedient and, and at the same, same time, time you want to be kind. Mm -hmm. Kindness entails respect, entails obedience, entails all these good qualities. Kindness. Spending on them. Mm -hmm. In fact, in fact, in Islam, spending on parents is wajib. It's mandatory. It's mandatory. It's mandatory to spend on your parents. When you have money and your parents don't have money, they can't make an income you don't say well let them go get income benefits or welfare or uh, social security or from from country yeah. to country yeah. varies no you go spend you spend if your parents need money you have to it's a must Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold you accountable I, I've seen some that nag that whine you know why do I why do I have to spend on my mother I've given her so much it's enough. Did your mother say enough? Yeah, I when mean, she, she was raising you. She know, and the thing is that she, she bare you in her stomach in, in her womb for almost nine months. For nine months. I mean, did your father say it's enough? I have to go to work, from early in the morning to late in the evening to bring you food, and to make money for you and your brothers and sisters, until you became eighteen, twenty, for twenty years. Yeah, we he was see making that. money we for. See that he didn't say enough. If you spend a couple of dollars on your parents, you have to say it's enough. Let let my other brothers yeah. spend on them. Like, why let is my sisters. Spending? Yeah, they fight. They 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 run away from responsibility towards parents. They do. That's a shame. That's a shame. Parents, they fight over the child. Who who takes care of him? Who sleeps next to the child? But when it comes time for children to take care of their parents, they run away from the responsibility. Let my brother do this. Let my sister do this. If it's an aging mother, she needs someone to sleep next to her, give her her medicine, take her to the doctor. The children, they flee. They pass on the responsibilities to others. This is a shame. The Quran says kindness to parents. <laughs> Thus, it's a financial obligation to spend mm -hmm. on parents. Spend time with them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes parents don't need anything other than your company. Your yeah. company. They just want someone, especially at, a, at an old age, when they're by themselves, mm -hmm. no, one, no one visits any longer. They need someone to go and sit with them, speak to them. Or at least listen. If you don't want to speak, listen. Especially elderly. The elderly, they have a lot yeah. to say. They have old stories. Yeah. They have a lot of experience. There's so much to learn from the 
from the elderly and old people because they're full of wisdom yeah they're full of experiences yeah, they're they full of, of stories experience. they've seen civilizations fall and rise they've <coughs> seen uh, dictators and presidents and dynasties there's so much to learn from our parents the Quran and this is on this and uh, that's significant as well but going back to the first episode when we discussed uh, orphans you brought you brought up a very significant point about how parents are the only people who want the best for their children the, to benefit their children yet when they grow up they tend to forget that but how can we be thankful to our parents thanking our parents Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Quran anishkurli anishkurli waliwalidik thank me and thank your parents as well thus we sometimes forget this to say thank you to our parents mm -hmm. to thank them you know it's, it's two words yeah it's two words but in Arabic it's one in Arabic it's one shukran yeah. ahsant it's, in Arabic it's one in English it's two in uh, on, uh, maybe other languages it's only one yeah in Urdu it's shukriya yeah and in Farsi they say merci it's one word just one word but this word has a major impact yeah on every human, on every human, when you do a good deed, when you do a, something good, when someone tells you shukran, thank you, you feel appreciated. Yeah, you, you feel, feel good. respected. You feel respected. You feel that your work didn't go unrecognized. Well, what about parents that do so much for us? Mm -hmm. That do so much for us. Don't they deserve a thank you? Don't they deserve a thank you? I remember once I came late from college. I was uh, stuck in traffic. So I came maybe 15, 30 minutes late. My mother was so panicked. Mm -hmm. She was so worried. They were about to call the police. <laughs> Say with my, with, my, with my mother. And I'm sure all of my dear yeah. viewers, they have a similar experience. <coughs> yeah. There is nothing like the heart of a mother. Yeah. Nothing like the heart of a mother. She worries so much. Do we thank her? Do we thank our parents for their dedicated work, for their hard work? Imagine. Now we're sitting here in between these two shrines. Our dear viewers are watching this blessed channel in the name of Imam Hussein. The who should we thank? After Allah, our parents. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for our parents, we wouldn't be here. We Definitely. wouldn't be in Karbala. We wouldn't Definitely. be lovers of Imam Hussein. We wouldn't be fasting in the month of Ramadan. Who taught us these things? It was we were taught by our parents. If our parents never fasted, we wouldn't have fasted either. We wouldn't have prayed either. Thanks to our parents that they taught us these things. You see, that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm -hmm. emphasizes on parents mm -hmm. after worship. After worship. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ حَسَنًا Right after worshiping him, kindness to parents. That's how important mm -hmm. it is. Allah could have said, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ And then mentioned, he could have mentioned prayers, yeah. fasting, khums, hajj, jihad. No. Parents. Parents. Emphasized on parents. Emphasized on parents. وَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِي شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدِي حَسَانًا Pray to Allah. Worship Allah. Mm -hmm. Do not take partners with Allah in kindness to in parents. Kindness to parents. Mm -hmm. Immediately after Allah, parents. That's how, that's how significant they are. And when we say thank, thank parents, thanking doesn't necessarily need to be with words. Mm -hmm. Thank you could be with, with actions. When you're there for your parents, when you serve them at times of need. And now it's even easier, just a text message. Text message, yeah. ask about your parents. If you yeah. live in a distant city, call, text message, send a... A small message. There's mm -hmm. so much you could do for your parents. That's how you thank them in return. It's not just by words. Mm -hmm. By actions as well. Alhamdulillah. Um, when talking about kindness, under that umbrella falls humbleness. Being humble to parents. When someone, I mean, uh, when uh, in the previous episode, I believe we talked about humility in the, the humility Quran. In the Quran um, 
this happened to me as well. I mean, uh, to many of the youth, when our parents say something to us, sometimes it, when they repeat it, we get frustrated with how much they repeat something. But uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran, "Wa taqul lahuma uffan." I mean, the smallest word, two letters in Arabic, you know, uff when they say something. No. The Quran says the Quran, don't, don't even don't even say that. But when it comes to humbleness, um, to what extent should we be humble to our parents? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Quran, and we mentioned this yesterday, mm -hmm. the, uh, Allah says, lahuma dhulli min mm -hmm. Lower your wings in humility for your parents. Dhul Dhul is more than humility. Mm -hmm. Dhul is uh, is really lowering lowering yourself. Lowering yourself is not required in this. It's not even a good quality. Humility is a good quality. Being humble, showing humility, yes, but not not too much lowering, mm -hmm. except when it comes to parents. Lower yourself when it comes to your parents. In Islam, we have a good quality. It was a good deed that we should all perform and that is to embrace the hands of our parents. This doesn't exist anywhere Some people else. find it shameful. Some sh find it shameful. Some, you know, I've seen some, some uh, children, some sons and daughters, they call their parents by their first names. Yeah, I've seen that as well. In America, it's something very normal to call your parents da uh, Dave, John, Mary. They call them by their first, yeah. first names. And their parents allow them to do so because they want to be friends with their sons and daughters. This is shameful. Be humble. Show humility to your parents. Embrace their hands. Embrace their feet if they allow you to. Yeah. We'll touch upon that, inshaAllah. The Quran says, إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْنِ don't say off. Don't say off. That's the least thing that we do. Yeah. For example, some parents tell their children, take out the trash. If you really don't feel like doing it, you say, Oof. Yeah. You sigh. You get frustrated. You don't say anything else. Mm -hmm. All you do is say off. The Quran says, don't even say off. Don't even say that. Imam al Sadiq Ali Salam in a hadith, he says, if there was a word smaller than that, Allah would have mentioned it. Because that's the least thing that children could say to the, towards their parents is off. The Quran refrains them. If there was something even smaller than that word, lesser than that word, the Quran would have mentioned it. It's haram. You can't say off. You can't say off to your parents. To this point. وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا And don't yell at them. Don't raise your voice at your parents. Rather say good words. I see a lot of children, they shout at their parents. Yeah. They shout. They raise their voice at their fathers, at their mothers. They yell at them. They give their parents a hard time. It's as if they're the boss at home. They, they really hurt their parents. Yeah. They avoid eating just so that the parents will get worried. And, you know, I remember... As children, sometimes if we wanted to yeah. hurt our parents, we wouldn't eat. Yeah. So that, you know, because when you don't eat, your parents start worrying. And this is wrong. You do this when you're three or four or five years yeah, old, not, not, not when, when you're, you're 15. Yeah. Not when you're 20. You don't go on a hunger strike when you're, when you're 15 or 20 with your parents. Don't raise your voice. Mm -hmm. This has, a, it has an effect. Mm -hmm. Those who are kind to their parents, it'll have an effect on them. Those who are bad with their parents, it will also have an effect on them and with their children. A hadith says, If you're good with your parents, your children will be good with you. If you're bad with your parents, your children will be bad with you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even says, Whoever does a good deed, even the smallest deed, he will, he, he will 
You'll see that. You'll that see it. I mean, how about respecting our parents? So which is Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam mm -hmm. when he became a, an emperor and the king of Aziz mm -hmm. the emperor of, of Egypt, his father came. His father and his brothers, they came into his court. When he saw his father, he was about to stand for his father. He hesitated for a moment. He's a king now. He's a king. He, sh he shouldn't rise so quickly. For a moment he hesitated and then he mm -hmm. stood. Jibra'il came to him. He told him, open your hands. He opened his hands. He took out a light. A light. He told him, what is this light? He said, this is the light of prophecy. Yani he's no longer a prophet? No, he's a prophet. But the prophecy, prophethood that was the supposed to be in his lineage, mm -hmm. it got taken out. Well, where did it go? In his brother Lawi. Lawi is the one in Surah Yusuf. He said, فَلَنْ أَبْرَحَ الْأَرْضَ حَتَّى يَأْذَنَ لِي أَبِي Lawi, when he went to Egypt, long story, mm -hmm. he refused to go back to Canaan, the land of Palestine. Mm -hmm. They told him why. He said, because my father said, go back to Egypt and bring your brother Benjamin. So I will not move until my father gives me permission. Allah rewards them. Allah rewards him for this statement. He made the prophethood in his generation. SubhanAllah. This is a big deal. This is a big deal. And it's also um, important to add on to your, to your uh, statement there. As uh, Allah SWT states in the same chapter, uh, Praying for parents is very significant as well. I mean, that verse is also great because uh, as they raised me, I pray for so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may have mercy on them just like they raised me in my childhood. So praying for parents, Sayyidina. This is, this is a very important issue mm -hmm. that sons and daughters pray for their parents. Whether, they're, whether their parents are alive or after they die, mm -hmm. especially once they're dead. Once they're dead. One of, the, one of the good things that a believer leaves behind is a son or daughter that prays for him. Mm -hmm. This is comforting for all parents, that when they die, they think that the son or daughter will pray for me, send me good mm -hmm. deeds, send me salawat, they will give charity on my behalf, there is a hadith that says, إِذَا مَاتَ بْنُ آدَمْ إِنْ قَطَعَ أَمَلُهُ وَعَمَلُهُ إِلَّا عَنْ ثَلَاثِ When the son of Adam, meaning humans, when they die, their relationship with this life ends, except with three things. صَدَقَةٌ جَارِيَةٌ If this person who died, for example, built an orphanage, a mm -hmm. mosque, and people continue to benefit from it, the reward keeps on coming. Mm -hmm. Keeps on coming. To عِلْمٌ يَنْتَفِعُ بِهِ النَّاسِ he kept a piece of knowledge, a book, a theory, lectures, knowledge. He kept mm -hmm. knowledge for people to continue benefiting from. Mm -hmm. Or a righteous son or daughter that will continue praying mm -hmm. for his father and son. And another hadith that a good son and daughter, bar, a son and daughter that is good to his parents, during their life. But once they die, if he forgets to pray for them, he will be considered aq, disobedient to his parents. Because he forgot about them. When they died, he forgot to pray for them. While on the other hand, if a son or daughter that were disobedient while their parents were alive, mm -hmm. now that they died, he prays for them, he asks Allah to forgive them, Allah will make him bar, mm -hmm. bar. obedient, an obedient son or daughter. Alhamdulillah. That's it's important to pray for our parents. This is, this should be part of our everyday dua in salah, after salah, before salah, during salah today. Rabbi khfirli wa li walidi. Wa qul rabbi rhamhuma kama rabbi ani sagira. Oh Allah, bless them. Have mercy on them the same way that they had mercy on me when they raised me as a child. Dua mm -hmm. for parents. How about non-Muslim Sayyidina? When it comes to non-Muslim parents, we see that either a mother or a father or both. 
how should be how should the sons or daughters respect or be uh, kind to their parents the quran addresses this mm -hmm. the quran tells us that if you have non-muslim parents mm -hmm. if they tell you not to be muslim if they tell you not to believe in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you don't obey them mm -hmm. you obey your parents and good things and the good things even in the neutral things that are not wajib and not haram. Obey your parents. Be kind to them. Except, there's one exception. If they tell you to disobey Allah, if they tell you not to believe in Allah, not to be a Muslim, no, you don't obey them. But at the same time, you're still kind to them. Mm -hmm. Still show kindness to them. Still respect them. Be kind. There's a verse that says, وَإِنْ جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَنْ لَا تُشْرِكَ عَفْوًا وَإِنْ جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَنْ تُشْرِكَ بِمَا لَيْسَ كَبِهِ عِلْمٍ فَلَا تُطَعْهُمَا Do not obey them وَصَاحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا Yet remain a companion to them in a good manner, in a good way. It means continue being kind with them. In fact, a man came to Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. He told him, Ya Ibn Rasulullah, I became a Muslim and my wife uh, and my mother I apologize my mother is still not a Muslim what should I do should I leave the house should I speak yeah. to her should I ignore her he said you know what were you kind to her before becoming a Muslim he said mm -hmm. yes he said from today I want you to start being more kind show more respect be more polite if you used to serve her, serve her even more now that you're a Muslim. Show her that this is coming from your Islam. Islam is teaching you this. Islam is teaching you to be kind to your parents. And this is a form of da'wah. This is a, more, a form of da'wah. When children show kindness to their parents now that they've accepted Islam, parents will see that their children have changed. Mm -hmm. They will come towards Islam. They will come towards Islam. I'll share with you a story. A couple of years ago, I went to Australia mm -hmm. during Fatimiyah. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to the city of Perth. And there was an Islamic center there founded by a Muslim sister. A lady. She had established an Islamic, an Islamic center all by herself, mashallah. Mashallah. I was very, very impressed and I was very proud of her. Anyhow, she's originally uh, half Iranian, half Filipino, mm -hmm. if I remember co correctly. Her mother is from the Philippines and who's still a Christian. I believe she was a Catholic. The mother told me, her mother, who was a Christian, she told me. She said, and she would call me Sayyid. She said, Sayyid, when my daughter became Muslim, she changed. She became a better daughter. She was good with me. She became even better. And I know this is because of Islam. I know because this is of Islam. I told her, okay, then you should become a Muslim. Yeah. In that case. She said, yes, one day, one day, one day I will. Yes, this is very beautiful. You mm -hmm. show your parents that you become even better because of your Islam. This is a form of da'wah. Yeah, parents will become, they'll become Muslim Definitely. because of this. This year in Muharram, I was in Canada in the city of Edmonton. Mm -hmm. A young man at the age of 17 had converted to Islam. He came and he told me what a struggle it is, how difficult it is. And his parents now know that he is a Muslim and how difficult it is to try to deal with them. But he was saying that I was, I'm being as respectful as possible to my parents. Mm -hmm. More than... I was when I was following another religion. I told them, good, keep it up. The more you see pressure from them, the more you show them kindness. The more they try to boycott you or hurt you because you've converted, you, you left the mother religion, show more kindness. This will have an effect later on. Mm -hmm. In a couple of years, they will realize that this is your Islam that's pushing you to be kind. Yeah. This will draw them near to Islam inshallah. definitely and 
you mentioned mothers. I mean, when it comes to parents, uh, treating father is, is different from treating the mother because a mother has that uh, softness, different from the father. He's, he's a bit aggressive when he, when he talks, when he deals with the child. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, they emphasize on mothers. Luqman, peace be upon him, uh, or I think it was during the Om Sadiq, or not Luqman. When uh, a scholar asked for the students to bring uh, uh, sand from uh, heaven, so one, no one brought anything the next day, but a, a student brought sand. He was shocked. He's like, where is this from? He's like, it's, it's from beneath the feet of my the, mother. The feet of my mother. So it's, mothers have a significant place. When the Quran tells us this. Mm -hmm. Again, the, the Quran emphasizes on parents, but more specifically, mothers. mothers. Let's see. The Quran says, وَوَصَّيْنَ الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ And we reminded man of his parents, حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ وَهْنًا عَلَى وَهْنًا Immediately mentions his mother. That his mother carried him. Wahnan ala wahn. Wahn means with, with difficulty, mm -hmm. over difficulty, difficulty and more difficulty. وَفِصَالُهُ فِي عَامَيْنِ أَنْشُكُرْ لِي وَلِوَالِدِيْكَ وَوَصَيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ أَنْشُكُرْ لِي We remind him to to thank me, thank Allah, thank Allah. and thank your parents. Mm -hmm. Allah mentions both parents, but an emphasis on mothers. Mm -hmm. And another verse. وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ أَحْسَانًا حَمَلَتْهُ أُمُّهُ كُرْهًا وَوَضَعَتْهُ كُرْهًا Again, we reminded man of kindness to his parents. To be kind to his parents, his mother, his mother carried him كُرْهًا كُرْهًا means with, with anguish. It means that sometimes she's fed up, but she still carries him. Yeah. And when she gave birth with anguish, she gave birth. Islam emphasizes on mothers. And when, really, when we see, when we compare mothers and fathers, we see that mothers go through so much yeah. hardship to raise their children. First of all, they're the ones that are pregnant, not yeah. fathers. Nine months of pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Pregnancy is difficult. It is. Anyone who's married and has a wife knows, realizes how difficult yeah. it is for a mother to go through pregnancy. Uh, there's pain there's uh, lack of sleep uh, there's disorder in personality uh, in sleep for nine months she has to deal with this pregnancy and then labor the pain of labor yeah. the pain after labor the lack of sleep the sleepless nights with the child who has to who gets up in the middle of the night that wants to be breastfed the man turns around and uh, he keeps on snoring. He continues in his deep sleep and he snores. But it's, the, it's, his, it's, it's his wife, it's, it's wife the poor thinking. mother that has to get up and breastfeed. and mm -hmm. She's the one that worries. A man came to Imam Sadiq alayhi mm salam, -hmm. told him, Ya ibn Rasulullah, I came to Hajj. It was in, in Mecca. Mm -hmm. He said, Ya ibn Rasulullah, I carried my mother during tawaf on my shoulders. I carried her, she couldn't walk. So I carried her. Have I done justice? Yeah, it's Have I returned the favor to her? He said, if you carry her around the Kaaba and in between Safa and Marwa, and you do this 70 times, you haven't returned the favor of one of the strokes when she feels during labor, mm -hmm. one of the pangs of labor. You haven't returned the favor of one of these strokes of pain. Wow. You haven't done anything. You haven't done anything. Another man comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. He tells him, Ya Rasulullah, I have, an, I have an aging mother and I have an aging father. Mm -hmm. And I could only take care of one. Who should I take care of? He said, yeah. your mother. Your mother. Three your mother, times. your mother. Four times. Four times. Emphasizes on the mother. Take care of your mother. Because mothers, they go through a lot of difficulties. They do. A lot of hardship. They don't just have... They won't, when they become old, it's not just about physical uh, difficulty. It's not just physical weakness. It's also emotional. They it need is. someone to speak to. They Definitely. need someone to be there for them. Of That's course. Islam emphasizes on this.
And I don't think there's any other religion in the world other than Islam that emphasizes on parents, on mothers, and on fathers yeah. the way that the Quran emphasizes on parents. And I just remembered a significant story, a very touching story as well. There was one scholar, of course you know that as well, he came to Ziyara uh, to pilgrimage to one of the shrines and uh, hoping to see Imam Al-Hajj Al-Mahdi. So uh, when he, he, there's specific traits and characteristics of the Imam. So when they came, when he came into the shrine, waited for the Imam, the Imam came, but he couldn't get up to say salam to the Imam. He saw the Imam going to, some, to a person, to a young man who was not even dressed that well. He said salam to him and left. He, got, he was shocked. He came again and saw the same action the next day. So he, he, he was saddened by this. So the next day, in, uh, uh, he went to that person, to that young man, and asked him. He asked the bomb, they showed, they showed his house. He went to him, he saw him taking care of two paralyzed parents. His dad was paralyzed and his mother was paralyzed. He cleaned after them, he fed them, he changed their clothes, he bathed them. He did everything. And on Mahdi, like, it goes, to him. goes to him because he showed respect and kindness to his parents. Sure. Alhamdulillah. Uh, we came to a conclusion of the episode. If you have anything to add on, Sayyidina. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our parents, Inshallah. to have mercy upon them, to elevate their status in this life and in the next for all the troubles that they have spent in mm -hmm. raising us Inshallah. and making us followers of Ahlul Bayt and lovers of Amir al Mu'mineen, Rasulullah, Fatima al Zahra, Al Hassan, Al Hussein, and the children of Imam Hussein. Inshallah, we learn from the lessons of Ahlul Bayt and the Quran. Inshallah. So, respected viewers, brothers, and sisters in Islam, I would like to thank you uh, for watching. And inshallah, uh, stay tuned for the next episode. And if you, you can log on to. Uh, to our social networking sites uh, to discuss and ask any question you would like from uh, Sayyid Hussain Qazwini. Uh, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum Sayyid. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.